Hello everyone, welcome to AV's Maxlow Facial and Dental Talk and in this video, we are going to be discussing about favorable and unfavorable fractures of the mandible. Now, as far as favorable and unfavorable fractures of the mandible are concerned, they are exclusively a classification of only the angle fractures of the mandible. Now, before we go into the topic, which can be a tricky one, let's check out the basics, which would help us to understand the topic better. So whenever there is a fracture, it results in a discontinuity of the bone, usually resulting in the formation of two segments. Now in an angle fracture, there is a proximal fragment, which is the fragment which is towards the ramus, and the distal fragment, which is towards the body or the tooth bearing area. Now how do you differentiate between horizontal favorable and unfavorable and a vertical favorable and unfavorable fracture? A horizontal favorable or unfavorable fracture entirely depends upon the view in which the mandible is viewed. For example, for a horizontally favorable fracture or an unfavorable fracture, you can see the x-rays such as OPG or a 3D CT scan to determine if it is favorable or unfavorable. It is a direction in which the mandible is viewed. It is viewed from a horizontal direction. Now we move to the vertical side. It is respect to the direction of the mandible when viewed from the top or a vertical angulation and the x-ray or scan through which this can be seen is the axial CT scan. Fracture patterns can be classified as favorable and unfavorable. A favorable fracture happens when the pull of the muscles which is nothing but the masseter and the medial pterygoid helps to reduce the proximal and the distal fragments. So what is the meaning of reduce is so now the fracture has occurred now there shouldn't be any displacement of the proximal fragment with respect to the distal fragment meaning the fracture is reduced by itself or there is a close reduction. On the other hand, unfavorability, unfavorable fractures occurs when the direction of the muscles such as the masseter and the medial pterygoid results in the separation or the movement of the fractured segments. Now, to understand this better, in picture A, the proximal segment remains reduced compared to the distal fragment even though there is a fracture line. On the other hand, in the picture B, you can see the proximal fragments are displaced superiorly with respect to the distal fragment. So this is an example of an unfavorable fracture. Now let's move on to horizontally favorable and horizontally unfavorable fracture. As mentioned earlier, in picture A, the direction and pull of the masseter which is superior even though there is a fracture, results in the close reduction of the mandible and there is no displacement of the proximal fragment or the fragment towards the ramus compared to the fragment or the distal fragment which holds the teeth. So this is an example of horizontally favorable fracture. On the other hand, in picture B, the pull of the masseter has displaced the proximal fragment with respect to the distal fragment, resulting in superior movement. So this is an example of an horizontally based unfavorable fracture. To understand this better, a fracture line runs downward and forward so that the displacement of the segment is avoided. That is, even though the pull of the masseter tries to uh, you know, separate the fragments, the direction of the fracture line results in the segments not being displaced. On the other hand, in picture B or the picture towards the right side, the pull of the masseter is results in the displacement of the proximal segment upwards. This is because the fracture line in this case has run downward and the backward direction. Now, Moving on to the same from a vertical point of view, again, as I mentioned earlier, the concept of favorability and unfavorability entirely depends upon the movement or the pull of the muscles resulting in the movement of the proximal fragment. However, whether it's horizontal or vertical entirely depends upon the view of the mandible. In this case, we are viewing the mandible in a vertical view. Now in picture A, the fracture line runs from the inner lingual plate obliquely backwards and buccal or towards the buccal side where the medial movement of the proximal fragment is unrestricted. So this is a case of an unfavorable fracture that is the pull of the muscle does not resist the displacement. On the other hand, in picture B, the fracture line runs from the outer buccal plate obliquely backwards and towards the lingual side and the medial movement is restricted, meaning so the fracture line the, or the pull of the muscles has resulted 
in resisting the displacement of the proximal fragment. So this is an example of a vertically favorable fractures. So to so compare the difference between the horizontal and the vertical fractures, it's the view in which you see the mandible. If you see the mandible in horizontal direction, it can be called as horizontally favorable or unfavorable, depending upon the pull of the muscle. If it results in the displacement of the proximal segment, it is called as a horizontally favorable fracture. If the pull of the muscle results in the displacement without resistance then it's a horizontally unfavorable fractures now the same when viewed from a vertical view so it's only the view which makes the difference right so horizontal means viewing from the horizontal side vertical means viewing from a vertical side and the same concept applies here so if the pull of the muscle results in the displacement of the segment it is an unfavorable fracture if it resists or stops the movement of the proximal fragment it is known as a favorable fracture so whenever the topic about favorable or unfavorable fractures occur the first thing which we need to keep in mind is the anatomy so the muscles involved are the masseter and the medial pterygoid which results in the you know pulling up of the muscles compared to the suprahyoid muscle which are going to pull the mandible downwards or a result in the uh, displacement of the fragments. Now let's try to solve a few examples here. Identify the uh, type of fracture in this form. So first thing we have to identify is whether it's a horizontal or a vertical one. Now as you can see it is an OPG so you're viewing the mandible from a horizontal direction so it's a horizontally oriented fracture or a horizontal angle fracture. Now if you see the quadrant on the third quadrant you can see that the fracture segment proximally has been displaced. So this is a case of an horizontally unfavorable fracture. Moving on to the second picture. Here again it's a horizontally based fracture. Now you can see the fracture which is posterior to the fourth quadrant uh, adjacent to the molar runs in a direction in such a way that the fragment is reduced or has no displacement. So this is a case of horizontal, that is you're using the manual in horizontal direction and favorable fracture. Next, in this case, again we are seeing it from a horizontal view, there's a fracture in the third quadrant and you can see the proximal fragment being displaced. So this is a case of horizontally undisplaced fracture. Now this is seeing the mandible from a vertical view. It's known as a vertically uh, uh, favorable fracture because you can see the pull of the muscle has not displaced the proximal fragment. Now next concept with respect to uh, favorable and unfavorable fractures is the teeth in the line of fractures. This has been a quite a controversial topic but based on the uh, guidelines given by clinics of North America they say the mere presence of tooth in the line of fracture shouldn't necessitate the removal of the same which means just because you see a tooth in the line of fracture you shouldn't remove it now there are certain indications for which the tooth should be removed one it prevents the reduction of the fracture that is if the tooth is there it's going to prevent the reduction of the fracture. If there is any infection related to the tooth, so it can be periapical or periodontal infection, it can that should uh, be an indication to remove the tooth. And the third should be an associated pathology, which should be an indication or the third indication to remove the tooth. Now, what are the disadvantages of removing tooth? It can create a possible soft tissue deficit at the extraction site. The closed fracture can become an open reduction when transoral approach is not used. <coughs> And there's a potential need to remove bone in case of an impacted tooth, compromising the bone buttresses, which could ideally help in the close reduction of the fracture. Now, these are the sources. Uh, Clinics of North America, you can check out this article for better understanding. And there's a three-volume Fonseca, uh, a very good textbook for oral and maxillofacial surgery. And they have discussed in detail about uh, favorable and unfavorable fractures. So... Thank you for uh, patiently uh, viewing this video. Do subscribe to this channel. And in case you want any specific topic to be covered, kindly mail me to this address and we will do it at the earliest. Thank you.